Uh, one of the things that Labour's announced yesterday, we started with the big announcement that Keir Starmer is going to sort out overcrowding in prisons by releasing 40,000 prisoners who, um, well, just petty crimes like stealing a car. You can go. It's fine. Don't worry about that. You've ruined somebody's life or you've ransacked a shop, but you just go. That's absolutely fine. Today, this is great, Labour is to allow more than 100,000 migrants to apply for asylum after scrapping the Rwanda scheme. Sir Keir Starmer's spokesman indicated some 90,000 migrants earmarked for deportation to Rwanda will be, uh, with, uh, will be amongst the 102,000 who will be processed through the system. Which begs the question, why weren't they processed before? We're always delighted to have on. Uh, Stephen Wolfe, Director of Centre for Migration and Economic Prosperity. Stephen Wolfe, welcome to my, my new socialist world. How are you? <laughs> well, I, I'm grateful to your new socialist world. I'm in a, a, my new world of a car, having been involved in the rainy weather a car accident, unfortunately. Oh, mate, I'm me. sorry. Uh, it's all right. It's OK. But it, the car accident seems to be a great analogy for what is really Keir Starmer's policy of just allowing anybody who wants to come over in a boat in this weather to get here and now know for, for certain they will never leave. Because that's what this amnesty amounts to. Just like he's going to an amnesty for petty criminals, it's an amnesty for the people smuggling gangs to allow them to get as much money as they can now to get as many over here. It is farcical, but it's not anything that we didn't expect. And this, is, this, and, the, and, the, and this is what we found so frustrating. Doing, so doing the show, you know, you're a broadcaster, during an election there's a thing called Purdy, you can't be seen to we spoke to everybody some bonkers man on from the green party that was my low point of the whole thing but here's the <laughs> truth i get right here we go suspected people smugglers will be treated like terrorists in new laws under starmer government fantastic but that's all he said for three years we will deal with the illegal gangs he didn't talk about the people that were waiting to be processed. He didn't talk about how he was going to quicken up that process. And, as you quite rightly say, the first thing we hear is 100,000 of them are going to have an amnesty, which will, in fact, reinvigorate all those people who phone me up every day and say, Labour created this, they want immigrants. And I want to put something to you, Stephen, that I said to my wife the other day, and she said, you are losing the plot. Tell me if I'm wrong. <laughs> Uh, director of the Centre for Migration and Economic Prosperity. Just go with the economic prosperity thing. I've said this before on the show, but not to you. So we've got three million people on the dole. And all the, he the bedwetters, as I call them, say to me, they're all mentally ill or disabled. And I say, that's not possible. I'll give you a figure of one million. That leaves two. We're paying benefits for two million people to do nothing. For, maybe they want work, but they're not working. We're also opening our gates to bring people over or our borders from foreign countries to do jobs that I'm told no British people want, like fruit picking and porters in hospitals and the NHS is on its backside. Why doesn't the government take the two million people that I'm paying and everybody else is paying tax for to do bugger all, excuse my French, and get them to do the jobs that the people are coming from abroad and stop those people coming? Why is that rocket science? Am I mad? Help me out. It's, it's, it's not rocket science to understand that there's a lot of people who are claiming benefits who could be working yeah. now what what they'll argue is that they're all sick and ill and mainly suffering from what all three million what all three million of them stephen well all... yeah they, they they're defining hugely a huge number of them as being mentally ill which is causing secondary in, Ill, illnesses such as backache and neck ache and pains like that and then they're unable to work because of that and that's because we changed the definitions we change the definition of what is regarded as ill. We change the definition is what is acceptable to be regarded as ill. And that is what they do. They're changing the definition wow. now to enable those people who have come over here illegally to be defined as capable of falling within the asylum rules. We know that if you, most people accept that if you're fleeing torture, Jeremy, they can come here. We saw Absolutely. that. Absolutely. I've said it till I'm blue in the face. Ukraine was yeah, a great we'll, example. We'll say that. Great. And then we have the ECHR, but those two combined only amount to about 40% of all applicants who are, who are allowed to stay with the right to reside. 60% of them fall within this area, which is called the discretionary right to reside here. All Starmer's doing is following on what Rishi Sunak did, which is extend that and allow more in through allowing discretionary rules. I mean, I, That's what the government does. I saw a video this morning, I'm not going to play it, People smugglers bragging to migrants in France. Yes, absolutely. It's safe to go there now. There's a Labour government. Right, I, 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 I still struggle, and I try not to sort of hyperventilate on air, 
I still struggle to understand why we, as the fifth most successful nation allegedly in the in the world, can't come up with a processing system. I I I, I, I watch with interest that the, the the rise of reform over the last six weeks, and I watch with interest the li the rise of the, the 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 language. Oh, he's a far right. He's racist. He's fascist. Reform. Many people, thousands, million, four point one million people who supported reform will come back to us and say, no, 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 they're talking the language reform that the Tory party used to before it became centrist. But in all of that mixture, in all of that mixture, whether it's Labour or Conservatives, nobody seems to have a problem. And today, people smugglers, there are people still coming to this country. The weather's not so great. I'm sure that pleases Sakir. I don't think he's got an answer. But what really does my head in, Stephen, if I'm honest, is everybody says to me, nobody has an answer. I, I, am I missing the point? Is there no answer to this problem? Well, there are answers, but the answers are diplomatically difficult. We know that de deterrence works if you return the boats back to France. But in order to do that, you can possibly change the law, remove yourself from the ECHR. That's not going to happen because an elitist group of people in power don't want that to happen. The second element is you could pop them back on the shores of France. But what would that do? That would cause an international incident between France and Britain. The Foreign Office don't want that. The Treasury don't want that. And none of the nice Ben Rien de Presson want to do that because they feel it's uncomfortable at their dinner tables. So action can happen. You could remove them instantly on planes straight to Rwanda and then let the courts challenge you afterwards. They won't want to do that either. Because again, once more, these people don't want to take difficult decisions. And so the people smugglers laugh at them. And just as you saw in America, Jeremy, and, and I'm, I'm sure you've noticed what happened over there, three and a half to four million yeah. people come in through the southern borders, and the people smugglers are estimated to make about a billion. This year, that 100,000 he's saying will allow to come over is going to make 250 million pounds for people smugglers. Do you really think in Afghanistan, in Somalia, in Iran, in Iraq, those boys who are thinking, right, we can get over to Britain now, we've got a great chance of staying over there, then bring our families over, are not going to be willing to pay £15,000 to people smugglers? Of course they are. It's happy days, Christmas come early, for all those people smugglers now who are going to make a fortune. And, and, and more than that, people in this country who voted in a Labour government will see and watch this problem get worse and worse, nobody will have an answer. And my other side of it, apart from what I said to you about you know, people long-term unemployed is. I, I genuinely mean this. I've said this for years. Uh, it, it, it sort of ground into me by my mother. There are people who have paid their stamp, as she used to call it, for years. And they're at the back of the queue. And, and, and to me, that is fundamentally and morally wrong. That an old lady of 70 will wait four years for a hip replacement, we can arrive on a boat and get a four-star hotel. Now, I, when I say that, people say, well, that's, that's, that's inflammatory and wrong, these poor people. And I say to them, France isn't war-torn. And here's my big question to you, Steve. I'd love you to answer this. So if I'm escaping a war-torn country, and I, I, I take absolutely what you said about Ukraine, I think we showed ourselves to be the country that we are. We opened our doors and our homes. If I'm in a war-torn country, right, the f surely the first country I get to that's not war-torn, I'm so relieved I'm going to live there. Why do they all still come to bloody Britain then? Because they know that they can get to stay here. And that's wow. the point. For them, they know they can arrive here. They know they're going to get housed straight away. They know they're going to get benefits under the UN conventions. Forced us to put that in legislation. So we do pay them. We give them a, a stipend. And now they know they'll be able to work here and stay here. And not only that... Only after a very short period of time can you start claiming to bring your family over because oh. that becomes part of the discretionary oh. rules. I don't know how you so do the job you do. They can bring the whole I, lot over without an issue. I don't know how you and do the job. I, them. I don't know how you do it. I could talk to you for bleeding ages. I'm sorry <laughs> to hear about the traffic accident. I'm sure it wasn't your fault. And, and it's all seriously... Oh, it's not me. It's, 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 it's my friends who's driving. I, so I, have, okay. I have to say, I have to say... There's a few of us left, and we're going to keep banging this drum because I think it's appalling. Stephen Wolf, thank you so much to do. Good luck with what you're going through right now.